Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Rise of the Immortals Trophy. Haven't heard me say that before. Why? Because this is a brand new tournament. At least it is in its uh, first and second week, kind of respectively, uh, and uh, has had a few games already, so I'm a little bit behind the curve, but I've been waiting for a few replays to get put up. Uh, I'm not also not the only YouTube guy out there doing casts for this tournament. We've also got the one and only TA for Life, of course, many of you will be familiar with, and also TJ and Napalm. Uh, if you uh, haven't heard of them before, uh, I don't know why, because they've been doing casts for a while, so go and check them out. Um, and you can see if you go to the tournament page on the forums, you can see their uh, YouTube channels are all listed there. So do go and check them out. Um, we haven't been as uh, organized as we should have, seeing as there are four casters getting involved and four pools, as you can see on the left hand side here. Uh, it would have made sense for each of us to take a pool and deal with that, but uh, here at SOPCOM we're just not that organized, so we may overlap quite considerably. Um, we may uh, potentially get a, a playlist of the best cast together and give you a nice running uh, sort of uh, sequence where you can watch them all, but that'll be a little bit later on. Today, however, speaking of the my fellow YouTubers, I'm going to start with a Pool 3 match. Uh, this was played uh, a few days ago now between the YouTube stars and the Immortals. If we scroll down here, you can see uh, YouTube stars, uh, there they are, Napalm and TJ, versus the Immortals, which is Lane Lass and Chosen. If you aren't aware of what goes on in this tournament, it is a particularly bizarre tournament. Uh, it could only happen here, I'm telling you. It's uh, teams of two people, obviously, and... Uh, the f it's a best of three and the first game is a regular 2v2 on uh, a p an island picked out of one of these colossal map pools so you can see here's the the 2v2 map pool uh, absolutely mahusive um, and uh, the second game is then a 1v1 and you won't be able to pick out a lot but you can definitely see uh, a few of the irons in there and the third one is also a 1v1 but with the other people that didn't play in the second game, if you know what I mean. So uh, you've got a 2v2 and then a 1v1 on uh, between those two teams of, of one of each of the players and then the second game is the other two players face off against each other. Uh, the third game won't always be necessary. I know very often in Supreme Commander tournaments we play all the games regardless but they decided um, because there's going to be so many games in this not to uh, force people to play that third match if they've already lost so um, some games will finish with just two but uh, we shall crack on so like I say this is going to be a pool three match between the YouTube stars and the immortals and if you are wondering who on earth would have come up with such a crazy tournament system uh, it is of course those crazy Germans that would be the responsibility of Voodoo, Kircher and Luzon. Only those guys would come up with something quite so convoluted. Obviously, um, after the uh, group stages, it's going to go into a regular knockout tournament. So you're going to have the sort of winner and second place will go through from the group, from each group. And the winners of the groups will play second places from the other groups and then it'll go into a standard knockout tournament so don't worry if you didn't get all that we will be going through it again and again as we uh, progress through the tournament but anyway let's crack on with game one in this pool three match between the YouTube stars and the Immortals so up here for YouTube stars we have TJ he's going Seraphim orange and he's gonna be at 12 crop position over here we've got uh, Napalm also going Seraphim <coughs> and then down here for the Immortals the six o'clock position we've got chosen also going seraphim and what a surprise also going seraphim is lane last you can't blame them roanoke's abyss seraphim incredibly powerful on this map obviously because you've got the floating artillery you've got the t3 sub hunters the excellent um uh cruisers for their firepower and range and base bombarding capabilities so it's kind of a no-brainer and i would expect especially on 2v2s when uh, you've got closer proximity of bases than you would in a 1v1 ladder match on Roanoke's I'd expect to see uh, a lot of Seraphim uh, purely for that uh, that reason but uh, no super early Navy going out right off the bat pretty standard regular stuff engineers just going out picking up those mass points you can see air factory queued up there for TJ 
and uh, air factory being constructed by Napalm. So very, very similar builds all round, nothing out of the ordinary whatsoever. It's all pretty standard. First upgrades happening for Lane Lass. Of course, Roanoke's Abyss is a, such an old standard favourite. It's been played so many times, these guys instinctively know what to do. Not a, a great deal of variation in gameplay, but should definitely be interesting to see how it works up. Obviously, you've got this kind of bisected thing running right down the middle, two empty islands right in between them. So you're going to see these two areas probably, you'd imagine, be the focal point of uh, any initial engagements. A few spy planes, or sorry, scout planes going out early doors, and you can see Chosen has already queued up significant uh, numbers of naval factories. And uh, a lot of people don't get the early radar up, and I don't know why, because uh, especially when you get, you know, early air coming out and giving you hassle, it's an absolute necessity if you're going to effectively deal with it and keep your engineers safe. But um, still, everybody f very much following the same pattern, getting the scout planes out, and just wandering over and picking up these islands. You can see an early engineer drop out for Napalm and he's getting a factory up super quickly and it's going to help him uh, give him the advantage on this island. You've got to like how prepared he has been however Chosen is very boldly marching his commander directly up to that island. And that is going to make for some very interesting action when he gets there. Meanwhile, over on the right-hand side, it is Laneless from the Immortals that has managed to make the grab on uh, the Intermediate Tree Island. So very much a um, an even match so far, but it's going to be interesting to see what happens with this ACU, whether this tips the balance. First few bombers out for TJ, obviously sensing the threat over there. He's uh, obviously seen that now, so he wants to go over there and deal with it. Take a look at the economies. You imagine they'll be pretty similar. Sitting on 39 is Laneless. TJ sitting on 40. Napalm sitting on much lower, on 23. Chosen down, I'll tell you, but Napalm is having colossal power issues, so that will be why. And uh, Chosen ACU getting down there and generally being a complete jackass. You can see a little T1 PD or a couple of T1 PD going down for Napalm, trying to stand his ground with those engineers. He's uh, building medium tanks, so not even thinking about getting floating artillery on the way to do any base attack, but uh, Chosen is. He's steadily pumping them out from his main base definitely doesn't want to get uh, let napalm get too established here he's you can see he's pushing quite hard you can see he's got a land factory two land factories will be up on this middle island with two more queued up i think as much early pressure as possible and those early factories he's constructed has got out a few frigates they're going to help deal with the air incidentally my voice sounds a little bit off today is because I've been suffering pretty badly. So I hope that it isn't causing too many problems on your end. Terrible place to land for that interceptor. And those frigates just absolutely hosing down the mobile land units of uh, Napalm. They're going to come across this naval factory and this could be a little bit of a disaster. Imagine they're going to focus that once they've dealt with these engineers. Engineers promptly trying to construct a torpedo launcher. The question is, will it be in time to save that naval factory? A few floating artillery pieces over here. They're going to deal some damage. Going to lose that extractor and that radar. This is very much the format you're going to expect. The map is going to be covered by uh, floating artillery. You can see TJ's got a nice little production facility going up here on this middle island. Laneless doesn't like it, so he's moving in to try and disrupt it. PD is there, has now been taken out. 
uh, three factories now up and running on that island. Laneless just uh, warning Chosen to be careful. <coughs> Excuse me. And uh, now Napalm now has some navy of his own. You can see he's been forcing navy pretty hardcore from that one factory. Pretty serious drop happening now for Chosen. Looks like he's trying to skirt round the edge. Either going to try and uh, get up round here and cause some trouble for the main island or he's trying to come in with a different approach. Of course you've got a... What is that? One, two, three... T1 PD there now. Admittedly, artillery is ideal for dealing with it. So it's all very low tech at the moment. I can't see any T2 on the field at this point in time. Having said that, not at all. Laneless has gone straight for T3 and has an ASF out on the field already, and that could be crucial for one team or the other. Either for the air superiority it could give them or for the amount of mass that he's expended getting there and now left his main base vulnerable to an attack from TJ. Very nice pressure from TJ and he won't know it yet but it's pretty important that he keeps it up right now and takes advantage of this. So that little drop from Chosen has gone right to the edge of the map next to Napalm's starting position and he's correctly guessed that there shouldn't really be any main defences in the base because they've got to go through the rest of his units he would anticipate to get there. Let's see if uh, Napalm can see he's got no radar signatures on those transports going back so there's no reason to suggest that he's in any trouble whatsoever right until these units start appearing. That'll be one T2 mass extractor going down. And this could be real trouble for uh, the YouTube stars. A very nice, aggressive little tactic from Chosen. You see Napalm moving his ACU out of the water, back out onto land to try and deal with this. He has got a T2 gunship out there, so that is uh, going to help him dramatically. I shouldn't think... Uh, Napalm will lose too much more in this attack, but still, nice little harassment. Takes his eye off the front. He loses three mass extractors. Look like three T2 mass extractors. And that ASF now, a couple of ASFs now out on the field. So TJ is going to know that he's got it. But look at the damage he's managed to do. He's forced Lane Lass into getting some T2 PD on his island. But that uh, attack from TJ, very profitable indeed. One, two, three, four mass extractors down. And of course, Anus has been putting a lot of energy into um, getting this T3 facility up and running. So he hasn't been able to really develop this island in any meaningful way yet. Uh, I mean, to be fair, Napalm hasn't managed to do anything on his upfront island either. So there's credit to TJ for getting this attack in nice and early. You would think despite that harassment... The uh, Immortals are still in pretty good shape, although that's a pretty significant a T1 artillery attack coming in from Napalm, now pushing in on the main base of Chosen. It's just a question of how quickly his ACU can dispatch it before any serious damage is done. I'd like to see him go for this group of engineers, which he does. Picks up quite a few of them. Now just wisely skirting away before he loses all the units to overcharges. significant uh, T1 interceptor force as well from uh, Napalm but look at these little where have they come from they must have come right right the way up round here and down these units from laneless so they've been on a bit of a quest and, uh, quite the nuisance they are becoming and TJ's T1 Navy now moving into the shipyard zone of laneless doing all kinds of damage Doing enough. I'd like to see him focus on the engineers a little. He's going after the torpedo launchers first, but I don't think his boats are going to last very long. Promptly getting popped by those torpedo launchers. 
And still, you see, Lanus has managed to hold his ground here. And these three T2 PDs are going to guard him nicely against any more mass artillery drives from this little b uh, fire base or manufacturing facility up here. And TJ has responded to Laneless's ASF spam by getting up to T3 Hair himself, so he is covered from the air point of view. Meanwhile, it's a very low-tech war going on on this side. Which is quite interesting. So you kind of got to think that the YouTube stars are perhaps slightly ahead in this. After all, Napalm holds this island. Uh, yes, he's he's not teched up, but neither is uh, Chosen, who is uh, oh, he's kind of backed up against the wall a little bit. Very low tech, whereas TJ has managed to tech up. He's got pretty good looking economy. All T2 extractors in his main base. And uh, he's matched Laneless, who's obviously teched up, but he's got this middle island, so he has a little bit more resources. Gunship's going down now to the horde of ASFs and the frigate fire. is just uh, a series of probing engagements. So attack submarines coming in now from Chosen, which is quite interesting. You'd imagine he couldn't really afford to spare the units. Although uh, that horde of interceptors from Napalm has been thinned out very nicely by the presence of this cruiser. Napalm Asking TJ if he wants uh, his ACU in his base. Help building uh, experimental assault bot. Be interesting getting an early experimental out. TJ really needs to be more concerned with holding this front island. He definitely doesn't want to lose it. Sorry, not TJ, Napalm significant air force out for TJ and it does seem that Laneless has completely abandoned any major production of ASF so air superiority firmly in the hands of the YouTube stars. There goes Napalm's ACU plonk it down in the middle and probably start construction of a uh, experimental. There it goes T2 gunships now going to work on the uh, artillery, Napalm. Napalm clearly not watching, he's got a lot of T2 intercepts nearby going, but there he goes, sending them in. Wants to keep it away from that cruiser. Lots more gunships coming in now for Chosen. TJ needs to be careful here, he's got a pretty low-fi navy. Coming up against destroyers now, and they will murder that. So the last few boats going down now. Literally just subs and uh, gunships left. But of course he can't do anything about uh, those gunships with the exception of the frigate and destroyer fire. He's got no air force of his own. And it does surprise me that uh, Laneless has given up production on ASFs. Allowed TJ to grab the initiative on it. Of course he's now at will to just destroy all of those PD, although Na uh, Laneless is very nicely and hastily constructing some T1 anti-air defences. The question is, will he run out of gunships first? I expect he probably will. But there's a few more coming in to reinforce. But I don't actually think he can destroy them faster than Laneless can put them up, so kind of like a losing battle. <laughs> There's four gunships coming in. Now Laneless pushing up and he's got two cruisers in the mix now so that is going to uh, really help deal with TJ's ASFs and gunships. 
Napalm looks slightly outnumbered down here at the bottom left. Still very much a static front for the moment. A few spy planes going over, just checking what Laneless has in his main. There's a lot of gunships concealed down here on this little middle island. And you can see the chicken is up and running and promptly marching straight for the immortals. <laughs> Chosen has spotted the T3 air and Lanus is like, yeah, I've been fighting it. <laughs> TJ is saying who should he kill? Should go for Laneless. This island has been absolutely decimated by those gunships. It's given ground up to the Navy, but at what cost? Look like the Immortals are getting anything economically wise except one T1 mass extractor out of that. Just take a look at the economies and see what uh, we're looking at here. So TJ sitting on the 140 odd mass mark, Laidless sitting on the 99 mass mark that was, I think. Yep. Napalm, 93, and Chosen, like 120, 90, no. Much lower than that. I did drop down to the 80s for a minute there, I think. 80s, 60s. So, yeah, it does look like the, economically speaking, the YouTube stars are in the lead. Some nice macro on behalf of TJ. But this is real trouble for Napalm. His base is getting absolutely shredded. He really doesn't want to lose this T3 naval facility, but he's going to. There's absolutely nothing he can do. Lots of ASFs swarming around trying to thin out the air, but that's not where the damage is coming from, unfortunately, for them. The chicken is now making its way into this base there's not a lot in terms of firepower that you can do with it just uh, look at what he's doing once he's quit okay. sorry about that <coughs> and that is going to be all kinds of trouble you can see Laneless hastily constructing as much point defense as humanly possible Getting up uh, some shield gens. There's actually, quite a few T2 PDs that have gone up here. That could be the end of Lameless's base and indeed the Immortals for game one. Although. Unfortunately, TJ hasn't got his ASFs in the area, and those gunships have done horrendous amounts of damage. They're going to pick up the kill, and that has really, really saved Laneless. So unfortunate those ASFs weren't nearer. Lionic Storm taking out a few things. Oh, 150 hit points on that mass extractor. Power generator goes down. How is that still alive? Ah, extraordinary. So, Immortal's still very much in this. Quite dangerous Navy-wise. I want to see more T2 out from my fellow casters in terms of Navy. Obviously, um, TJ, although having the best economy, working off the least number of mass extractors, well, him and Chosen, and despite being quite heavily out-teched, it looks like Napalm has done a pretty reasonable job of holding off this island. Little engineer drop going off there. So we move past the 30-minute mark in this game. 
You see some torpedo bombers out for TJ, which is a pretty reasonable move. I think he's got uh, air superiority and needs to find a way to deal with this fleet of laneless. But uh, YouTube star has got to be disappointed with uh, that chicken. That could have been a game changer right there. Or game winner, even. So many gunships out, though, for TJ. A little horde of chosen subs coming in, looking for some kind of target. These cruisers are going to do a lot of damage to these gunships, but they'll promptly die, I would imagine. One down. So many gunships out of the air, though. Look at that damage coming off those cruisers, and that's why Seraphim cruisers are amazing. Tool of choice, generally, when uh, you're trying to paper scissor stone your opponent, is going to go to air when you're fighting against Navy. But, uh, you know, forget shields. I don't need them. I'm just going to blow you out of the sky with my outrageous anti air firepower. And look at the amount of artillery flying across Napalm's base. And that is horrendous damage caused by the Immortals. Very nice work there from Chosen. And that has completely turned this game on its head. Napalm's main base is in tatters. I'd love to see him leave a few here, though. Get rid of that T2 factory. There's no, meet, there's no need to be running away from it. He is indeed going to go back for another pass. There's no better target. Definitely wants to get rid of this T2 mass. Extractor as well. And there it goes. So, absolutely brutal little maneuver there. Must have come up from this main base. TJ says he's building a chicken. You've got to think that the it has really swung in the YouTube star's favor here. But look at this. Napalm's ACU right at the side of the map. Launching TAC missiles now at Layless's base. Oh, and that's painful. This is game really, really heating up now. It's past the 35-minute mark. And, of course, there's been no cause to get any TAC missile defense up until now. So, Laneless's base is completely devoid of it. Doesn't want to lose this T3 mass. That would be very critical. You can see more TAC missiles going off from Napalm. Not a cheap thing to build a TAC missile launcher on the ACU, but you can get your ACU in the right position, definitely be worthwhile. You can see TAC Missile Defense going up now for Laneless, but it's not going to save that T3 Mass Extractor. See, three Mass Extractors gone down now. I'm not sure if they were all T3. Power Plant going down as well. <laughs> you can see he's sent some engineers over to find out what's going on. He spotted his ACU chosen promptly redirecting his units over I don't know if there's even a transport that can pick him up lots of gunships heading out just now converging TJ is moving his own units in to see if he can give him some cover but very nice work there if not slightly risky you see spy planes going over now. If we switch to Chosen, you see that gives them a perfect view of what's going on. That uh, Omni sensor on them. Engineers, uh, very nice engineers building torpedo launchers, but Napalm is obviously very highly upgraded, just insta-caps them and turns them into his own. And that helps absolutely obliterate the uh, T1 subs. You see, this okay, shit, he killed all my mexes. So, some great maneuvers happening in this game. Really enjoying it so far. Second chicken online and promptly marching straight towards the Immortals base. You've got to think that this game's kind of swung in the favor of the YouTube stars again, even though the main base of Napalm is absolutely down and out. He has still got the spare one, and he's got this uh, T2 naval factory. And despite it going down, of course, Chosen hasn't been able to migrate there because it's so far away from his main. Cruisers, while excellent, are not so good at ship-to-ship -ship combat. It does look like uh, TJ has a lot more destroyers. See, torpedo bombers harassing Napalm, who is still firing TAC missiles. 
see the difference in power between his TAT missiles and the TAT missiles from the ship. Take that uh, T2 naval factory down to just over 60% health. Nice little bit of cover being provided from TJ's ASFs. And there goes that T2 naval factory. There is one more. That was certainly the one that has been causing TJ headaches all game. You can see Chosen moving as many units over to this area of the map to help support his teammate. The damage might have already been done. This does not want to lose this T3 power plant, but is more than likely going to blame this with his commander, just trying to swap them as they come in off the sea. Down to 1,700 hit points on that T3. That is a critical power gen. Does not want to lose it. But is going to look power-wise. So literally just on the breadline now for power is laneless. But that's not going to matter because his base doesn't look like it's going to last. He was building a strategic missile defense. I don't know whether he's got any intel on what's going on these islands if there's any nukes or anything I can see anything but that doesn't mean there isn't obviously that base was annihilated and Napalm just boldly marching his commander over here and look at Laneless's calm down to a thousand hit points and that's going to get instead by the gunships so Laneless bows out of the game at the 43 minute mark and it is now 2v1 little bit of a desync at the end here which is a bit of a shame just have to ignore that box. And uh, that chicken didn't get to do anything, but it is going to march straight on towards Chosen's base. Have to wonder how long it'll be before Chosen capitulates, because he's not going to be able to deal with that. And we've got battleships incoming now from TJ. <laughs> Great work, by the way. Thanks. Lots of... Uh, masturbation going on there uh, <laughs> no they deserve it it was a lovely little play um, on uh, on Napalm's part I mean unfortunately he lost his main base but he didn't let it discourage him it's, uh, it's a brutal brutal attack missile attack on those mexes definitely gave them the advantage and it was nicely played as well by TJ keeping ahead of the game on the air production definitely give them the advantage over the course of this game and allowed him to build up a, a larger navy and with this chicken coming onto the island that is going to be the end of that base you imagine the end of that game marching in on Chosen. Down to 5,000 hit points and instant. So, the YouTube stars walk away with game one in this best of three. And uh, I know lots of other casters would stop there and do individual games, but Lusion did ask me in the Imba Cup to do matches as a single event. So we will march straight on. Would you like to quit? Yes, I would. And go straight into, what shall we say, it's game number two. And, yeah, that's loading up. Incidentally, guys, if you uh, haven't already done so, and you do use Facebook, do head on over to our Facebook page. That's uh, www.facebook.com slash Forged Alliance forever. Or just type in Forged Alliance into the search panel, you'll find it. It's a good place to get all your media and uh, news about what's going on, uh, what's happening with the server, etc., etc. So, this is game two. And this, as I was saying earlier, this is a very strange format, this tournament. But you then go from a 2v2 situation to 
two 1v1s, or at least if the YouTube stars were to win this match, that would be Napalm versus Chosen. So if Napalm beats Chosen here, the match would end because that would be 2-0 to the YouTube stars. If Chosen wins this, that will be one all, and they'll have to go to the third game, which should be Laneless versus TJ. And the map is Ambush the Enemy. Uh, which is not a map you see that often, but it's, I don't know why, because it's, uh, it's very nicely laid out one. You've got two large sort of plateau areas on each side of the map with a hydrocarbon on them. And, uh, and I like that little hydro, especially on a small little map like this, because it gives you an incentive to move uh, forward, especially if there isn't a hydrocarbon in your own base. And you can see this is built as a possibility for a 2v2. And uh, the initial assault bots going out for both guys, both playing Seraphim again, sticking with what they know. They may well be Seraphim players on the main. It's hard to keep track of all these things, and that looks like it could be one engineer that's about to go down. You see the woeful damage coming off that little assault bot. That does indeed go down. And uh, Napalm with a minor victory there manages to save that T1 engineer with 5 HP left. So, uh, <laughs> nicely done there. Napalm moving his comm out of his main base, just using it to pick up the occasional extractor as he moves towards the middle. Of course, there are two more hydrocarbons in the middle as well, so holding any kind of middle section is uh, it's pretty useful, but it doesn't often get to that. You don't often get a chance to build much in the middle, obviously, because this is usually a battleground. So, uh, and if you do manage to hold either central side, Chances are you're probably going to defeat your opponent anyway because there's three main entrances to the base. You can come from any angle and you're not going to be able to turtle up hard enough um, early enough on this kind of map. So Another assault bot accompanied by a light tank. Or sorry, the medium tanks. It's going to literally just park there, of course... Uh, Chosen doesn't know there's attack. anything on there. A few units probing the edge of Chosen's base, seeing if they can pick up any more engineers. For the moment, Napalm being allowed to scoop all the mass, or maybe not, no, there's an engineer there for Chosen, but uh, is managing to pick up these mass points. Napalm just shooing him off this little side plateau on the right. One engineer for Chosen picking up first of the mass points there. And now Chosen marching his ACU into the middle, so we're probably about to see the first uh, com on com interaction. Bombers out as well for Chosen. Nice bomb going down there, taking out an engineer and damaging two T1 power plants. Obviously with no hydrocarbons, the line of power becomes exceptionally vulnerable. And Chosen, if well directed with the bombers here, could cause immense damage. Decides to go for the engineers. They will probably stick with the power plants, personally. But uh, they have probably run out of luck as they get shot down by those interceptors. Now both teams, or both guys, have a few more units in the middle. We're going to see this first interaction between those. They're unfortunate that the tank stayed on the ridge and the artillery moved down into the gully for Chosen there. It would have been better if it had been the other way around. And Napalm leading far up with his commander now. Blood in his uh, sights. Wants to cause as much damage as possible. Wants to be a little careful. Chosen now moving up with his comp. Question is, can he see it? knows that's probably more than likely going to be the ACU. I don't, I don't know why he's pushing up that far. He feels like he's got the upper hand. He is going to turn round now. He's got a lot of units on him though, so this is going to be quite interesting. And pretty even at the moment. Napalm sticking on the comm, whereas Chosen is working on the extra units. And now there seems to be a serious deficiency of friendly units for the YouTube stars. Napalm taking a lot of fire, down to 7,500 HP, Chosen down to 7,500 HP. There is a lot more 
fire going on Napalm and Chosen, and Napalm doesn't have any friendly units in the area. He may just be a little too far forward if Chosen keeps pushing it. Could potentially end it here as Napalm drops down to 1500 hit points. Oh, 1000 hit points! 100! Ah, oh, so that's a very, very early win for Chosen there. In eight and a half minutes, he is dispatched. So you have that epic 2v2, which took, I don't know, it took about 50 minutes or something. And then you uh, go into a, a 1v1 that's over in eight and a half. And that evens it up. So you go to a third match, which will be TJ versus Laneless. I imagine it'll be the same map. Yes, it will. I'm not actually 100% sure at the moment whether or not the uh, maps are supposed to change for the 1v1s. This is the first one I've looked at. Uh, but I will be looking into that and seeing if they do. So anyway, we've got uh, Laneless up here at the top for the Immortals. And he's going to be going UEF. Hallelujah. We have some variation to the film. So and he's going for a, an early uh, non-air setup, which uh, you imagine is probably the, the safest bet. And uh, TJ is going one land, one air to start with, and he's still going Fim. So it makes a lot more sense uh, to switch up to UEF on this kind of map. You can get past the initial uh, early game phase with the artillery I mean it's it's as I say there's no real benefit for uh, seraphim artillery on this map at all a huge benefit obviously for water maps but um, obviously UEF excellent defensively so if you get into the mid to late game and you can get some kind of point defense creep going on definitely uh, a very mean option So, TJ working on uh, units right from the get-go, sending them straight out. First little assault bot may well pick up this engineer. I'd like him to move a little part forward because the engineer gets moved now. It could get out of the way. If he'd moved that a little bit earlier, probably would have got it away. see those huge wedges of T1 power gens that uh, TJ has elected to go for. And sure, it's the quickest way of drawing it. Um, I assume that's not templates. <laughs> um, did look like he drew them the way they appeared. But uh, it does make them vulnerable to bombing runs. Um, and, uh, Laneless was going for the same thing before that build order was disrupted by that assault bot up another engineer so assault bots working out nicely in the very early game for TJ and you can see the line of T1 power gens see I like the squares the template squares of T1 power gens you know you can use similar sort of area but it just makes it a little harder for a bomber especially if you're gonna face the line like this towards your opponent's base where the bomber is going to be coming from anyway um, kind of slightly a gift but Saltbot going down there from the strikers from Laneless and it's, uh, it's unfortunate that that was a radar and not a T1 PD but of course how are you to know he wasn't when he was start building it so scout plane going over Let's see if TJ can pick up any kills with this bomber that's following it up nice little bomb in here could cause some damage Fail on the move command there. Oh, they're still not dropping a bomb. And gets shot out of the sky before it does anything. 
love those bombers. So uh, TJ moving his commander to the middle, picking up some mass as he goes. And, uh, obviously hoping to pick up some mass points while Laneless has moved his commander to the left hand side of the map, wants to secure this plateau. Some mass points up and running. And a few strikers running right down the right hand side as well. And early, early tech from Laneless. And that's very interesting. That is going to be a make or break play. You can see he's having a lot of units on the field, but he's gone straight for T2 or one of his ground factories. That could be risky. He's pumping out Mongoose already. Whereas uh, TJ is electing to stick with a much more conventional mass T1 start. Wants to pick up this radar if possible. There it goes. See, I must admit, at this stage in the game, I would always favor pillars. There's not enough units on the ground to be making huge banks of land span. So you're not going to be doing marching in, firing, and marching out with the mongoose. So why not stick with pillars and outlast all of the smaller T1 units when you're going to have these kind of integrating fracas where groups of units move into and past each other. Going for one unit, it's so easy to micro out the way of the mongoose. Fortunately, TJ's attention wasn't on the ball there, but large force of Lobos. Oh, sorry, just playing Seraphim. Large force of the artillery's medium tanks in there. Yes, he does. So nice mix of units on the left hand side, and he does knock out the last of those mass threats, or he will do when he picks that up. Meanwhile, units from Laneless pushing in on the right hand side. And it's also quite far up with his commander near TJ, so see if we have any more close proximity finish as we did in the first game on this map. He's now moving his commander back, obviously concerned about this horde of T1 units from TJ. Concerned there's not a lot of units on the field for Laneless. Having to draw this mongoose back and skyboxer that he had. And he's yielded obviously the middle. Neither side has been able to get any mass extractors or for any length of time up and running on the plateau, although you've got to feel that this is partially secured now for the YouTube stars. There he goes. So he's TJ has secured the middle pretty much and looks like he's about to secure this plateau on the left and has paved the way to secure the right. So massive map control going towards the YouTube stars at the moment. It doesn't look like he's any signs of stopping either. TJ continuing to move his forces forward with his commander in support. Laidless forced to back his commander right up to the foot of his base. Looks like he was making a stand there on the hill for a minute continue to retreat backwards, taking pretty significant fire from all these medium tanks now. Laneless bang in trouble, he just hasn't got the units to deal with this and I think this is going to be a win for TJ, unless something absolutely astonishing happens. Laneless down to 2,000 hit points, calls the GG, knows he's done, there's no way out of this. He's got a couple of triads up, but that's not going to thin out all of that. Laneless down to 100 HP and the Fluey. So, TJ picks up the win. That takes it to 2-1 in the series. And a win for the YouTube stars. And they're the first ones to win. I believe they were the first ones to win a game in that third group. Group 3, Group C. So, I hope you guys enjoyed that. We take a look at the table. So, down here, you can see Pool 3. It was YouTube stars versus the Immortals. We'll try and put this in the same way that Muzun uh, and colleagues have done it. So it's two, one ish. And then we get another one in there. It's YouTube stars versus Immortals. Paint. Who uses paint anymore? Obviously, hideous thing. 
So we get a red. That's one, two. There you go. That'll do. Brilliant. So, yeah, they get uh, the first point in the series. And uh, obviously that needs to get changed to a point. Like I say, guys, all of this is available on the forums. But if you don't mind spoilers, uh, you know, because that, that's getting updated pretty regularly. Um, I don't know if the other casters are planning to do total matches or they're going to stick with the one the single game format uh, either way it'll be interesting so stay tuned and uh, i shall have more for you and so will my fellow casters but for now that is me signing out